KR King of D&D Homebrew here, talking today about techniques you can use to make sure that when you start your game, your players have energy and focus. You know, as they're interacting with your world and exploring, <laughs> getting ready to have combat, they are ready to play. They know the situation on the ground. They know exactly where we left off the last session. Uh, they have a good sense of exactly what their players are capable of doing at that moment. Uh, they also have a sense of where they're going in your world. And the key here is to create momentum by having all that information at top of mind when you begin the session. So think of each session of an RPG game like you're getting ready to go on a trip or a vacation. What are the things you do as you're prepared to leave? Well, you're making sure you've got everything you need for the trip. You make sure you know where you're going, how long it's going to take. And you're making sure that everything you're leaving behind, everything's squared away. Because once you're confident in that, once you're saying, okay, everything's done it, I've got all that I need, I'm all set up as I'm leaving, now you're ready to enjoy the process of the trip. It becomes an adventure. And trips have a natural excitement to them as you start off. Well, you want to do that too with your RPG session. And like so many things on my channel, this video was inspired by an experience I had playing uh, I was in a, just yesterday, a Pathfinder game I play every week. It's an online game I play with Fantasy Grounds. And when I got there, I was running late. I, I just got I, at work and then I ran there on my computer and I got everything all set up and everyone started. You know, it was like, I was like three minutes in to the game. And the thing was, we had started just before a confrontation. And one of the things we were kind of unsure what was happening, we were discussing this, but our note taker character was not there this week. So we knew, okay, we were at this mine. We had freed these workers that were enslaved. We were investigating this cabin. And we had spent the night there. And then just as we were getting ready to leave the last time, these people came. We could see them outside. More of these. There were these ape guys <laughs> that were running this mine. And then there were these lizard men guys. Although they were something a little different that were sort of in charge. So we kind of reviewed that and realized what was happening. So I'm playing a gnome sorcerer in this game. It's a Pathfinder game. I just made it to sixth level. And basically, we had this confrontation and a battle ensued. We got in this big fight. And so the, we have a fighter and a barbarian, among other characters, and I'm this sorcerer. So I was kind of hanging back, and we're in this battle. And it became obvious I had a flaming sphere, and I'd already thrown a fireball. This lizard, These lizard creatures were immune to fire, and they were blasting fire from them. So I thought, okay, I'm going to run up to, into combat and throw my vampiric touch. So I had to use my movement. It's a three action game, so I did this. Well, it returned the vampiric touch to me. It had this ability. You know, you get these temp hit points and everything. So the next turn, I vampiric touched again, and then I was moving away. Well, unlike most creatures in this Pathfinder system, this one had an attack of opportunity, and it already hit me with this vampiric touch, and it just about killed me. I got a critical hit with its tail. I almost died, and it changed the way that I was fighting this battle and everything. Well, then when I got to the end and we were kind of, I was kind of looking over my character sheet in, in Fantasy Grounds, I realized I have got extended reach as a feat. I could have thrown the vampiric touch from 30 feet away. I didn't need to get close. I didn't need to almost die. But I, I'd forgotten that I'd taken that feat. Now, I got tons of excuses. I'm playing in three different Pathfinder games each week. One alternates, but three different games I have characters in. I'm running a game every Monday. Uh, I also doing this YouTube channel. I have a podcast I do every week. I have my day job. I have my family obligations, you know, but the thing is, who cares, right? The world's smallest violin. I should have looked at my character sheet and remembered I've got this extended reach feat. I don't have to go up close to give this vampiric touch, but I didn't do it. Now it's your player's responsibility to do this, but you can facilitate this process. When you start the session, you're going to have a little chit chat. You're going to talk about, you know, what happened in the weekend and all this kind of stuff. And then you're going to start the session. And typically you'll say, let's recap what happened before. What, where we ended up last week, what went on the last session. Now, some people have different techniques. They, they say to the players, I, you know, you go ahead and tell me what you did and they'll do that. But if they're like, I, we didn't have the note taker there this session or players just can't remember, just tell them, just fill in the details. Don't play the game of, because I've seen this where the GM says, oh, you don't remember? Well, I guess your character doesn't remember. Because it's like, really? I'm playing a game. I can't remember. And guess what? You know, you're play the game isn't as important to the players as it is to you, the GM. So just tell us what's happening. It's a game. Because the other thing that I've noticed is sometimes when they say that, it means they can't remember. 
And the players key in on this, not a good look, my friend. So you just make sure at the beginning of the session, you filled in enough details, crucial things, where we are, how the players got to where they are, what's going on in the greater world, what kind of, what are the objectives? Again, if you're running a weekly game, you might think, well, they'll remember that, but you'd be surprised. Then have your players quickly look over their character sheets. You know, whether they have a paper or you've got D&D uh, &D Beyond or Path Builder or anything else, just kind of review. And the thing is, like, if they're in the middle of a battle, or depending on what time of day it is, maybe they've, you know, they're in the middle of a battle, they've got prepared spell casters or, you know, people with spell slots. You've got hit points that are down. How many heals do we have? All that kind of stuff. You just review it. You just go through, make sure we've got everything. You know, you're just keeping everybody, oh my God, I used all my third level spells. I didn't realize that. I didn't remember that. And so you don't have any confusion about that. And you are aware of this as well. And you're looking at your sheet of the more, if you're in the middle of a battle, but also if you're preparing for something. They, this guy was preparing this battle. And we basically broke off just as it was going to happen. But if you're in the middle of the day, how, what have we used? What have we done? Where are we? Are we ready to take a rest depending on the RPG rules that you're playing? And you just quickly go over that. You're, the, the goal here is to get us right to that moment, right? When you're prepared, when you've got that, all that information, all this would be top of mind if you were in the middle of the session. So you're trying to recreate that right at the beginning. We're getting into this, all the information. This is my character. This is where I am. This is the situation we're in. This is what our opponents are doing or whatever. Let's go. Because it really would have helped me. Now, again, it's not the GM's fault that I did not review my character sheet in Fantasy Grounds and remember that. But if they had said, hey, let's all look at our character sheets. We just got up six level because it's in this adventure path where we all level at the same time. I would have looked at that because I did it offline. Oh, that's right. I have this feat. And it would have really helped out. Because the other thing about that was I'm playing with people that are very experienced Pathfinder players. I played for almost two years and I'm the least experienced. So it's also a little like, oh, I can't believe I forgot that. Because when I said it, I go, oh, shoot, I had this reach spell and you know it's, it's online no one was going you idiot get out of the game but i just felt like oh, you know i don't want to be that guy and neither do your players the other thing is if you're running like me a homebrewed campaign i've got to be on top of my game in order to get that energy going as well i have to have reviewed what was happening you know, have a sense of things. And then when, as I say, to fill in stuff if the players don't remember you're there to create that energy get that momentum going because another thing that you've got to do is at the end of a session or, you know, during the session and then at the end, review it, write down notes of everything that happened. Because a lot of times the players do stuff you don't expect and you have to improvise. I did a video on a one building a one minute village. I'll put a link up here to that. And basically the players went to this village, they had an idea, they wanted to do this. And I had it on the map, but I'd never developed it. And I just had to come up with it. Well, here's the thing. It's one thing to have the techniques to just, oh, come up with this. Here's the people in the town and here's what happened. Write it down. Or if you're just sketching, because, you know, it's hard to just sit there and take elaborate notes. Write down the names, whatever. But then later, you really, like right after the session, write out what happened. Because you'll forget. I have another video on this famous NPC I had years ago called the Golden Man, where I had this, the players unexpectedly did a stone to flesh spell in this Medusa's lair, because it was really interesting, copper. I thought it was copper. They said golden, whatever, giant. And they brought him back at the end of the session. And we got to the next one, and I had forgotten to write it down. I had forgotten all about it. So I had to just sort of improvise. Well, yes, I double improvise or whatever. Well, that's, you know, generally speaking, that's not a good thing, because it's obvious often that you have no idea. I made it mysterious, you know, to cover my tracks. But again, you don't want to be in that situation. You've got an opportunity. They did something incredible. You want your players to do things you don't expect and go in directions that you don't and force you to improvise. But you got to know, you know, you got to follow up on the improvising. You can't just wing it all the time. You know, it's like teaching. If you've ever taught, you can't wing. You got to prepare your class. You got to prepare for this because they key, key in on it and they start to treat it like it's improvised. Because if you're improvising all this stuff, well, why'd you do it this way? Why'd you do it that? The moment you've written it down, the moment you have it in your lore, this is the village. This is what it is. Now it's there. It's a real piece of information that the players, you know, bump up against, but can also rely on. And that sense that this is you know, a real thing, they're back in the game, they've, they've gone to this village or they've, they've rescued this 
person from the Medusa's lair, and now they're part of the thing, and they, they begin to expand upon their story or whatever. Uh, it's a living world. It's a real thing they're influencing. The other thing about creating this sort of momentum and energy and whatnot and having the players review things and going over what happened, you're not lecturing them. You're not, okay, what happened last week? I said, don't do the whole, oh, you don't remember that? You guess you don't remember it. You know, don't do that stuff. You're not lecturing them. You're doing it in a fun way. And the easiest way to do that is to make it a standard part of each session. So, you know, session two, right, you review and you do this whole process of what happened, what's going on. Okay, let's look at our sheets, whatever. And what you're trying to do is you're ending the chit chat, you're ending the side talk, you're ending the looking at our phones, whatever. Although, you know, if they're reviewing their characters on there or something, that's okay. But we're trying to get into the game. We're trying to start, as I said, that mid-game focus that we always have. So find out what works for your group. Maybe if you do the, you know, ask for the recap and no one can recap. Maybe no one's taking notes, you know, and they just have no idea. Well, don't get mad and don't say, you know, I'm not doing this unless you take notes. <clears throat> just recap. Just be prepared for it. And you'll be surprised how much you can jog their memories when you do that. The one thing, of course, is when you're doing your recap, you're not responsible necessarily for things that you leave out right? Because it's always great if someone keeps track. Again, I've seen it where no one wants to keep track and they just kind of float along. And then every once in a while, they get burned by that. Some NPC or something that they, they just sort of ignored or didn't remember, something happens where that person, you know, steals a tire. These guys, they left off this opening to this thing and they, they saw these adventures go by and they kind of forgot about, it. well, those guys went into the the, the the tomb that they had left alone and looted it. And they found this out later. And they had forgotten about the tomb and the adventures, and they realized, you got to write this stuff down. And they, we have a person that writes it down, but I think she wasn't there that week or something. But again, you don't want this to be the most critical thing in your home campaign. They forgot about it, and you're sitting there going, well, I guess they forgot. <laughs> That's not going to work. You you just remind them, you know, we're going to discover this this sacred chariot that will save this city something like that you know or whatever just remind them if they're not if they're not aware of that because again they don't care about your world like you do another thing is you may have players that resist looking at their character sheets they just give it a cursory thing well then they can make a mistake like i made by not being aware of that so another thing you can do is just make sure on your character sheets you know everything that's going on you know where your hit points are and spells or whatever just make sure you have a sense, you, hey guys, you all just leveled up or whatever, so make sure you're doing that in a friendly way. And most players, if they're into the game, are going to do that. They're going to give some sense of it. Now, again, when they, hopefully, when they do something like I did, which was forget something, they'll, they'll think to themselves, I don't want to have, ever have that happen again. Of course, <laughs> over the years, I've done it a few times, right? Because of all the things that we have in our life. But the point is, is that, it's such a momentum killer for yourself when you realize that battle could have gone a lot differently if I just remembered that feat, right? I got to remember that. I'm hoping I'll never forget it again. But I'm also going to look at my sheet while I'm sitting, especially in an online game. You're sitting there and you could be doing all sorts of things while people are talking, right? The GM can facilitate that by doing those techniques at the outset of the game and then making sure they've got their notes together and they can review that information for the players. So hopefully this will be helpful to you. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. Love to hear comments on how you uh, get players to get that forward momentum, get those gaming juices flowing at the very outset of the game. But most importantly, keep playing an RPG game, whichever one you choose, and tell somebody else about it.